I'm going to show you a look at a Lenovo ThinkPad W520. Uh, some laptops have the luxury of having a combined eSATA port. So when I say combined, let me show you what I mean. Focus, focus. There we go. Notice the port right here. shows the USB logo next to it. So it's clearly an eSATA port, but the fact that it has the e USB logo next to it implies that it is a powered port. And indeed that is the case. So we need that because the next thing I'm going to show you is the cable to go with it that I happen to have gotten from uh, Amazon. So it looks like normal you know, eSATA on one end. Let's get focus going there. And it is normal eSATA, but it is powered. And we can tell that from the other end. It's got SATA and power. Two halves, right? So now we go over to a hard drive that I yanked out of a laptop. See the momentous in this case. It actually has a it's been screwed to a base plate. I don't need to take that off. Why? Because all I need is access to the connector, the edge connector. So we go ahead and plug in that edge connector. And we now have power and SATA to connectivity all with one cable. So back to the laptop. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Alright. This particular device has red LEDs illuminating on there. Next. Boot Media. This happens to be a copy of a Windows Restore CD. We can go ahead and stick that in the side as well. Right, so I just want to show the versatility here and how we actually set up boot order and so forth in the BIOS. Now, this OS in here, I should point out, I don't care about. The fact that I just dislodged the cable and shoved it back in, or I didn't eject properly. Again, I don't really care. Nothing's, all, Everything's fully backed up. This is not necessarily what you'd be doing on a long-term basis. What I really want to show you is kind of a lab configuration here, where what I had was a ThinkPad, and an all-day event where Windows 8 is happily installed on the ThinkPad. Let's go ahead and stick in the DVD here. This is a Windows install, Windows Server 2012 install. Okay, so now we're all set. And this ThinkPad is loaded to the gills. It's got two one terabyte drives that are in our RAID 0 to be two terabytes, striped, really fast D drive. But my C drive is a tiny little solid-state drive right now. There's a keyboard right here. So what does that mean? Well, it means when I went to a all-day Windows Server 2012 install fest event, uh, I didn't want to nuke or touch or taint my C drive in any way. So this nice cable here gave me a really good way to enable me to install from the DVD over here uh, to my external drive, not mucking up my Windows 8 uninstall in any way, not touching bootloader, not changing boot entries, um, not really your traditional dual boot where you have a C drive, in my case it's a solid state drive right under the keyboard, where you have two different operating systems on, you choose a boot. This is really a, a C drive here and an external drive, an external SATA drive here, that's key, not USB, where I can install an operating system. And the ThinkPad allows you to do that. So here's what I want to explain. What we need to do is go into the BIOS and put the operating system on top for the hard drive that we want to install an operating system on. So let me explain and let that sink in. So if I go into the BIOS now, we're going to see the boot order you would expect, which is my C drive is obviously higher in my list, or should be higher in my list, than this external drive. So I'll go ahead and confirm that. Now I'm getting a really slow boot time here. We'll have to look into why that is. Make sure my cables are all seated firmly. Say to connect rather strange when it's not. And I'm now powered off. Okay. So we're not going to mess with anything, we're not going to touch any cabling, we're just going to leave SATA alone and leave this cable going. 
powering back up, we should be able to hit F1 and get into the Lenovo BIOS setup. I'll also point out I'm not using UEFI mode, I'm using legacy mode. And everything I'm showing you here may apply to other brand laptops. I'm not sure. It should. Uh, if you have an eSATA port that also has USB power, you should be able to mess around and boot from a variety of devices. But the directions or the methods you do that from inside the BIOS and those other brands uh, vary quite a bit. Okay, so the DVD drive in the right is spinning up, and it's greatly slowing the boot process. So I was just impatient. If I had waited a little longer, it would have been fine. Hit F1, and now I should get into the BIOS. Come in. So what we want to go to is the startup option, boot. So I hit enter, and you'll see there's my Runcore SSD, first in the list. Now a couple things to notice. We've got this flash drive showing up way down here, item 4. We've got this Seagate Momentus, starts with ST, in spot number 2. Windows Boot Manager. I'm not sure. I don't actually remember that during the lab, but the important part to bring up here is Windows 8 is going to install or it's going to boot on this particular boot. So if we hit Escape, Discarding Changes, and just let it reboot, we should see Windows 8 start to come up because we haven't changed anything yet. So, so far this video has been focused on a Typical configuration, when you have a solid-state drive booting on a laptop, you have it specified highest in the boot order in the BIOS to make sure that's the operating system you're going to get when you power the machine. I point that out because you don't really want to have some other hard drive higher in the list and Windows has sort of boot manager or boot code on there. Then you have all sorts of dependencies, so if that external drive disappears, you've now mucked things up and you won't get a boot. So, again, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible where Windows, there's two different versions of Windows, and both are installed in a way where they thought they were the first drive. And at the time I installed the operating system on there, Windows 8 laptop, and Windows Server 2012 in that external drive, it thought it was the first device in the list, so it didn't have to do any special Windows boot manager menus or anything, any kind of setup. It just works. So, after the re really slow DVD drive on the right finishes doing its seeking on the media it doesn't seem to like and this is just really slow um, after that finishes we'll see Windows 8 start to come up Okay, that Windows Boot Manager menu you saw, that was actually, now that I think about it, was what's on the USB key. So it's actually Windows Server 2012 Essentials Recovery Key, and it has a, a boot menu on it to choose 32-bit or 64-bit uh, machine. So that makes sense. Now this is a little complicated, there's a lot of uh, boot devices I'm trying to explain here. So. Soon we should see Windows 8 finish booting. And once we get to the desktop, we'll go ahead and cleanly shut down. So we're seeing DVD obviously slows things down quite a bit. All right, I'll do a restart. So I have to watch carefully, and I'll hit F1 as the machine goes through the BIOS test portion of the boot. And this time, 
we'll go ahead and select the Seagate momentous drive in the left there to boot. And what you'll see is Windows Server 2012 come up. Alright, now I hit the F1 key. Back to the startup menu. Hit enter. And move the Seagate to the top of the list. Okay, it's that simple. Hit F10 for save and exit and watch it boot Windows Server 2012 on the left of the next boot. So now you've got the gist of how do you toggle between two different operating systems using this eSATA cable and an external hard drive at will. So I can obviously go back and forth between Windows 8 and Windows 2012. Well, it will be obvious in a few moments here as Windows Server 2012 starts to boot. Uh, the next topic of interest would really be about how do you kick off and install on that external hard drive. So we've already laid the groundwork for that by setting the external drive as the first boot device. But for the next boot attempt, what we want to do is boot up the CD just for that boot alone, and it starts the installer for Server 2012, and then we would want to point it to this half terabyte sized drive for the install target. All right, so we're going to hit nothing and just let that boot for this particular boot. I'll just point it out again, having a DVD present uh, slows the boot time incredibly, probably three times as long as it normally is without that thing attached. Once you're booted though, the speed is fine. Windows 8 or Windows Server 2012 is unaffected. Now these LEDs on the left, they don't actually flicker, they just glow red at all times when there's signal and power, so there is no activity indicator on that external drive, unfortunately. So far it's kind of hard to tell what operating system I booted because the logo looks very similar. There you go, there's our answer. Windows Server 2012 showing right there. I'll also point out that not only are DVD slow, but you know, they're kind of going away. You can use the um, Microsoft DVD USB tool. It'll help you take an operating system, put it on a USB media to install from USB a whole lot faster than from any DVD. Okay, so we're ready to uh, reboot yet again. Yeah. Go ahead and do a clean restart. Let's pull out this solid state too, just to speed things up because they're really slow. It'll also show you in the BIOS what's disappeared now that we have the USB key pulled out. So it's good to be aware that you want complete control and using SATA devices makes that pretty easy. I've also heard a W530 did away with the E SATA port, so that's unfortunate. So there's not a whole lot of laptops, I guess, out there that have this uh, versatility of being able to play around with different OS's without touching your main OS in any way. 
Now, if both operating systems are NTFS, well, fair enough, they can see each other. So, for instance, server 2012 is just up. It was able to boot from here, but see the drive over here and its data. So, all right, it didn't boot from Windows 8, but it could actually see the files on the Windows 8 drive. So I just point that out. So no, you don't really have complete security here the way I'm doing things. But I'd also rather not, um, you know, either pull up my keyboard and take out a screwdriver and pull out the MSATA. That's ridiculous. Or um, I could go in the BIOS and disable the MSATA port on the motherboard if I really want to make extra sure that nothing is touching my C drive and my laptop. In my case, I have full daily backups. So if I mug things up, I can always restore from the day before. Not that big a deal. Now I'm hearing this hard drive go a little bit crazy. It's a little busy. You're seeing the LED here, green, solid on. So that SATA 2 cable and drive are busy right now doing whatever server 2012 domain servers do when shutting down, which is apparently quite a bit. Before I turned it into a domain controller as part of the lab, it was sure a whole lot quicker. All right, here we go. It's getting further along now. So, on a ThinkPad, you can hit F12 at boot to choose an alternate boot device for that boot time only. So you don't really need to go in the BIOS anymore. We already checked that this drive was first in the list. This time we just want to hit F12 to change the boot order for this next boot only, which is to show you what I did in this lab I was in. I booted from an external DVD to install over here into the hard drive. And that's how I'm going to wrap up this video, just showing you how we do that. So soon we're going to get the ThinkPad BIOS splash screen, and I'm going to hit F12. looking on the DVD and reading all OS's on there, and there are actually several, part of why that particular DVD boot media is so slow. There's several variations of Server 2012 in there. And it's also looking at every other hard drive in the system. It's trying to enumerate or uh, find or, or list all possible boot devices to present in a little non-graphical menu for me to up and down arrow and hit enter on the one I want. So to kick off the Windows Server 2012 install, I'm going to choose USB DVD drive. It says entering boot menu to confirm I pushed F12 and it gives me a list of all my possible boot targets right there and the hard drive is at the top of the list but we're just going to down arrow our way to the USB DVD drive and hit enter and now you'll see the flickering light 